I'll call this meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Rancho Mirage City Council, the Library and the Observatory Board, the Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. This is the regular meeting for Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. It is uh, 1.02 p.m. We will begin with a flag salute, and I will ask Mayor Pro Tem Wild to please lead us in the flag salute today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. We will now go to a roll call. Would the city clerk please take the roll? Council Member Mulatto? Present. Council Member Marker? Here. Council Member O'Keefe? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Weil? Here. Mayor Downs? I am here. Uh, the next couple of items are on our agenda are presentations and recognitions. The first item on the agenda is recognition of the City of Ranch Mirage Poet Laureate. Her name is Dorothea Bisbass. Now, Ms. Bisbass unfortunately could not be here today, so pretty good to have her in the room if we're going to recognize her and, um, and salute her. So we're going to delay that presentation to the next council meeting on uh, May 16th. The next presentation that we have is for a very special resident of the city of Rancho Mirage. Liz Palmer is with us. You can see her here in the front. Uh, Liz uh, was recently crowned as Ms. Senior California. And I'm going to read to you the mission statement of the pageant. The Ms. Senior America pageant is the world's first and foremost pageant to emphasize and give honor to women who have reached the age of elegance. It is in search for the gracious lady who best exemplifies the dig dignity, maturity, and inner beauty of all senior Americans. The Ms. Senior America philosophy is based upon the belief that seniors are the foundation of America and our most valuable treasures. It is upon their knowledge, experience, and resources that the younger generations have the opportunity to build a better society. I'm sure Liz will tell us in a moment when the uh, Ms. Senior America pageant comes up. She was recently crowned Ms. Senior California. Here's a little background on Liz. Liz Palmer is a California native and is an only girl with two brothers. She was a hopeless tomboy who later became, am I, is this all correct? I, you probably wrote it, so there you go. She was a hopeless tomboy who later became a standout athlete in the sport of track and field. Her high school hurdle record stood for almost 40 years after she set it in 1978. She was a collegiate scholarship athlete and after graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and an MBA in Organizational Management, she began her career as a senior accounting supervisor and project leader that lasted close to 35 years. The reason that uh, our uh, city manager is, uh, is saluting you with that is he is a CPA. Liz is now a senior track and field athlete who holds the American age group record in the 60 meter hurdles for women over 50 with a time of 9.32 seconds. Pretty fast. Yes, she's fast. Catch her if you can. She took her love of sport to the role of coach, first at the youth and high school level and now as a coach for Special Olympics. She shares and promotes the message of health and wellness with seniors. First, as a state executive director and now as the Pacific Region Vice Chair for the National Senior Games Association. Liz, Liz lives in Rancho Mirage with her husband, Gary, an oncologist who works as the chief medical officer for a biotech firm. Gary is a five-time Jeopardy winner. However, Liz likes to point out that on one of their first dates, they played Trivial Pursuit, and she beat Gary three times in a row. <laughs> Gary and Liz have, Liz have two sons, three daughters, and four very adorable grandchildren. Liz, would you join me down here in front? I have a plaque to present to you. Let me read this. So, Certificate of Recognition presented to Liz Palmer, Ms. Senior California 2024. On behalf of the entire City Council of the City of Ranch Mirage, I hereby recognize Liz Palmer's achievement of being crowned Ms. Senior California at the 2024 Ms. Senior California State Pageant, which exemplifies the dignity, maturity, and inner beauty of all senior Americans. Congratulations and best of luck at the 2024 Senior America National Finals, presented this second day of May 2024, and is signed by me. And Liz, we will do one more photo. Oh, that is Thank you, Lori. Would you like
like to say something to the city of Branch Mirage? Is it on? It should oh, be. It's on. <laughs> oh, I want to thank you for this great honor and the very warm welcome I received from the mayor and his staff. And let me just tell you really quickly, I've, I've had people ask me, why did you enter a senior pageant? Why? And the reason I did was probably about a year and a half ago, there was a certain news anchor who was discussing Nikki Haley, who was in her 50s, and he said she was past her prime. And this made me so mad. I cannot tell you how mad this made me because as seniors, we are certainly not past our prime. You know, and I've never used aging or society's view of aging to not do what I want or go after I wa what I want or even wear what I want. And the reason is life is not just for the young. It's for all of us. And we are meant to live it to the fullest. So here as your Miss Senior California 2024, I'm living it to the fullest. And I will compete for the Senior America title in Atlantic City this fall. I plan on bringing that title home back to the Golden State. So wish me luck. Thank you, Liz. Thank you so much for joining us today. And let's give Liz one more round of applause. Thanks very much. Okay, it is now time for non-agenda public comments. Uh, I will again remind everyone of the uh, three minutes uh, that uh, you uh, should limit yourself to in making your public comments. Uh, please forgive me if the three minutes rolls around and you are still talking and I interrupt you. Uh, and so I will ask the city clerk to please conduct public hearings. Christy. Thank you. So now is the time for anyone who would like to speak on an item that is not on today's agenda. I received one speaker card from Wally Melendez. Good afternoon, City Council, <clears throat> administration, and we, the people. Good to see you all. I'm going to skip over my favorite subjects. A little old, um, one of them, a little old um, hydrogen charger. By the way, on those cars, the, uh, the, the, the plug, the plug-in is about this size. It's small. It's not, a big old, it's not a big old monster. And I'm gonna skip over other subjects that I talk about. And I'm gonna skip right to RMU. Rancho Mirage University. Why does Rancho Mirage need a university? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Rancho Mirage, we are in the Coachella Valley that a lot of people like to talk about, ABAG and so on and so forth. The only college or higher education after high school for all, everybody graduating from high school is the famous COD, College of the Desert. COD will not cut it. I'm against COD, and I've mentioned it before, but I'm not going to go into that right now. We are in a unique time and position to, for education, educación. We have, we, we, we're in the middle of climate change. We're in the middle of uh, uh, decolonizing the big bad Russia. We need people that know all about this stuff. 
People around here, the ones that I meet, they love those big humongous vehicles that burn up gasoline and pollute the atmosphere. That's why we need FCEVs. We have, there's a lot of money out here, but nobody knows what to do with it. All they think about is real estate. Thank you, Wally. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? That was the only speaker. Okay, we will move on to city council board member comments and reports. I will start from uh, my right and go to my left today, so we will start with council member Mulatto. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to congratulate CV Symphony for their wonderful concert series, series that they provided us this year. Every performance was spectacular. The audience loved it, and we look forward to uh, future events with them. I'd also like to congratulate um, our marketing department for this wonderful Rancher Mirage at 50 book that each one of our residents received as a gift. Um, it is beautiful in every way, marking the history of 50 years, and it's hard to believe that 50 years has passed since incorporation because I remember as a child, which doesn't do me any favors, um, as a child coming here, and this was at one time Cathedral City, so that was a long time ago, and when Frank Sinatra Drive was Wonder Palms Drive, and I could go on and on about how this community has evolved and it's so different than what it was from the beginning. This book is a brilliant production um, with the help of our staff, Haley Tice and Lori O'Keefe heading, spearheading that effort and then working with Frank Jones from Palm Springs Life. We've received nothing but wonderful reviews about this book. If you have yet to receive your book, please contact uh, City Hall and you're welcome to come and pick it up. And speaking of our 50th anniversary, we're coming to the close on that year-long celebration, and I'd like to thank Gabe Cotting, Haley Tice, Lori O'Keefe, Kai Beach, and our Public Works Department that was involved uh, with so many events and celebrations um, that engaged the public to great reviews. Um, it, it's been a wonderful year, and thank you for all your time and your efforts, and um, we're just beginning. So we look forward to another 50 years. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Weil. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I had the honor of attending several events in the last week. Both were emotional and heartfelt. <clears throat> On April 23rd, I attended, along with Mayor Downs and Councilman Michael O'Keefe, the candlelight vigil honoring crime victims at the Palm Desert Civic Park. Each of us, along with other dignitaries, read the names of the victims, their age, and held a candlelight in their honor. You can only imagine the emotion when you hear the age of one of the victims as young as six months old. This memorial service has taken place every year since 2004. A candlelight vigil, vigil to those lost to a violent crime, providing solemn yet united space for remembrance and healing. I admired Sophia Flores, mother of Manuel Hernandez, whose son was killed by her nephew following a dispute at a family party. She described in detail the challenge of navigating the criminal justice system and her own life moving forward. I thought about the courage and composure that it took for her to relay her tragedy, and I frankly doubt if I could have been as composed. Other stories equally emotional were read and I believe the message for all of us is to love your family every day and to express that love. The other event was last Saturday at the river for the benefit of the Phenexia Foundation that was co-sponsored by the Rancher Mirage 
Cultural Commission. The Phenexia Foundation is a local nonprofit supporting teens and young adults with autism and other disabilities. This was a totally free event and featured an outstanding band along with several guest singers and the High Hopes dance troupe. I must tell you, the place was rocking. There was a raffle along with terrific prizes. The area of special needs is very close to my heart as my cousin was born with cerebral palsy and consequently I became active in this area. I give credit to Josh Hines from Visit Greater Palm Springs, whose mission is to attract, hire, and retain talents that thinks differently to create an inclusive work environment. I'm very pleased that the Rancho Mirage World Class Library and Observatory is a certified autism center, as well as the Jocelyn Center that is supported by the three cities, Rancho Mirage, Palm Desert, and Indian Wells. The Children's Discovery Museum that is getting ready to reopen will become a certified autism center as well. It was a busy week and extremely gratifying to participate in events that contribute so much to our community. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Council Member Marker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I first would like to congratulate Mission Hills Country Club as they hosted a tennis tournament this past week that featured hundreds of men and women's tennis players competing on three different surfaces, which included hard court, grass court, and clay court. This is truly a unique tournament that allows tennis players to compete on three different types of surfaces. Mission Hills did a wonderful job showcasing its world-class tennis facility. I would also like to congratulate the Omni Rancho Las Palmas Hotel as they hosted last week a free concert for our local residents featuring past American Idol winner Scotty McCreary. The outdoor setting was magical with the concert on their beautiful golf course and the mountains in the backdrop. The staff at the Omni Rancho Las Palmas did an exceptional job hosting this event that was very well attended. And additionally, I want to congratulate the Bighorn Institute and executive directors Amy and Jim DeForge, who did an exceptional job at their annual, annual spring fling fundraiser last week that raised over $35,000 for the Bighorn Sheep. I'm very proud to represent our city on this board as Rancho Mirage has done and continues to do an exceptional job helping this institute and the once endangered bighorn thrive in a healthy and safe environment, removing them from the endangered status. Please take a look at our short feature, Kai and Marketing put together on our watering hole for the sheep and other wildlife. Every morning when we get to come up here to service this watering hole, you get these beautiful views of the city, of the whole valley. We're going to be heading over to the Bighorn Sheep watering hole. The goal today is to go check on our camera that we have up there that lets us keep an eye on that watering hole, making sure that there's water there for the animals. Up there we have some bighorn sheep. We have uh, coyotes that use that uh, watering hole as well, as well as various bird species that go up there. We're gonna remove this camera and we're gonna take it back down with us. We need to do some troubleshooting with it. We have this camera set up so that we can monitor the water level in the pond to make sure that there's always water available for the wildlife that's up here. The big cord sheep are the main ones, but you do see coyotes. You see a lot of different bird species that come up, but there's just all kinds of different animals that use it. On here, we're able to see our camera that we have set up up here using this app right here. With that camera, since we've set it up up here, it really saves us a lot as far as having to hike up here to be able to get eyes on it. Especially like with the watering line, sometimes there's, there's breaks in the line and we'll have to come up and make the repairs. There's also the fence that was set up for the bighorn sheep so that they don't go out into uh, areas that they're not supposed to. 
we also do those repairs as well and make sure that it's secure for them and for the residents. In this area, this would be the primary water source for the bighorn sheep. And then you have the green foliage as well, which they eat as well. So it just gives them a good little oasis in the desert to be able to get some water, you know, especially during those hot summer months. I want to thank Kai for that and our marketing department. You all have done an amazing job and Ryan and our public works. Well done to all organizations on all fronts. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member O'Keefe. I'd like to say that I think our city should be proud of the way that we handle uh, the Bighorn Sheep Institute. That was a wonderful uh, video. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, circle your calendar. I got a couple of dates for you. On Wednesday, May 8th at 7 p.m., the Steinway Society's 2024 Awards Festival winners is having a concert at the library. These are talented young pianists, ages 7 to 17, and they're going to perform at the library, and the admission is free. The very next day on Thursday, May the 9th at 3 p.m., soprano Melissa Batalis and pianist Constance Gordy will perform musical theater songs opera arias, and American Standards, also at the library, and also um, complimentary admission. Uh, also, this week is the Chamber of Commerce celebrating Small Business Week, and that's where we honor and patronize our local small businesses. Also, the Chamber has just recently uh, reached its uh, membership of 600 members, which is double what they'd had just a couple of years ago. Uh, the 600th member is the Palm Springs International Film Society, uh, so congratulations to them and to the Chamber for its great work. And I am thrilled to announce that the City of Rancho Mirage is seeking proposals from qualified firms to develop a wireless master plan for our city. This plan will assess the current state of coverage within Rancho Mirage, identify areas with inadequate cell phone service, and develop a comprehensive strategy for improving wireless connectivity in our community. Uh, Councilmember Mulatto and I served on this subcommittee to try to find a way to improve cell phone reception throughout the city. Uh, this is the first great step in finding a solution. And happy Cinco de Mayo this Sunday. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Michael. So I want to spend a couple of minutes today talking about uh, the very important uh, relationship that this city has with our business community. And specifically, uh, I want to talk about uh, our major destination resort hotels, uh, the uh, Omni, the uh, Ritz-Carlton, the uh, Weston, the Agua Caliente, and now the uh, Sensei at Porcupine Creek. Uh, these remarkable resort hotels um, are extremely important to the financial health of this city. Uh, about 31% of the annual operating revenues that this city generates comes from transient occupancy tax, which is generated by these hotels. So uh, that gives you a pretty good idea as to how important uh, our relationship with the business community and with these hotels is to the future of the city of Rancho Mirage. Um, now, I'm the uh, city of Rancho Mirage appointee on the Visit Greater Palm Springs Joint Powers Authority, which acts as the region's tourism agency. And I wanted to highlight a significant thing that we do for our resorts. Each year, the city pays to have our Rancho Mirage-based resorts participate in the VGPS Summer Chill Co-op Program. The program is cost-free to our resorts and entitles them to new custom TV commercials every two years. And I want to show you those commercials today and give you some sense as to um, what those commercials look like and how important this relationship is with these resort hotels. The spots will run from May uh, through uh, August of 2024 across Spectrum Cable and KTLA in Los Angeles. And let's go ahead to the uh, next slide and let's run the first commercial, which is for the Omni Rancho Las Palmas. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. 
So this gives you some, I'm not going to read these statistics for you, big numbers. What this does is just gives you a general idea as to how many impressions uh, these, um, these commercials that we provide, that we help provide, um, how many impressions they make on, uh, on tourists in Southern California. Let's move on to the next slide and we will see the next uh, commercial for the Weston Ranch Mirage. <music> Okay, and then uh, the next slide, similar to the one on the Omni, again, it gives you some big numbers about uh, how many impressions and how important these, uh, uh, these commercials are to our resort hotels. Let's move on to the next slide, which is uh, the Ritz-Carlton, and we'll run the commercial for the Ritz. And then let's move to the last slide, and this is the spot for the Agua Caliente. Thank you, Josh. And um, so it's very important for us to, um, uh, to work with our resort hotels and make sure they're as healthy as possible for the obvious reason uh, that I mentioned a few minutes ago, the significant um, contribution that they make to the revenues of this city. So uh, that ends uh, the um, council comments for today, and we will now move on to city manager comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. None today, so I'll go ahead and move on to the consent calendar. Uh, the council has eight items on the consent calendar for consideration. Item number one is to waive the full reading of all ordinances introduced or adopted pursuant to this agenda. Item number two is to approve the April 18th, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Item number three is to adopt ordinance number 1216, second reading, approving specific plan SP23-0002 to establish the development standards and guidelines for three planning areas within the 36 plus acre site, Katana. Item number four is to adopt ordinance number 1217, second reading, approving the development agreement by and between McKellar McGowan Holdings LLC and Ramon and Rattler Partners LLC and the City of Rancho Mirage DA 23-0002. Item number five is to adopt resolution number 2024 next in order, approving the project list to be funded by the Road Maintenance and Rehabilitation Program in accordance with Senate Bill number one the Road Repair and Accountability Act of 2017. Item number five, or number six, is to adopt resolution number 2024, next in order, approving the updated calendar year 2024 salary schedule to comply with the California Public Employees Retirement System CalPERS statutory and regulatory requirements for compensation earnable and publicly available pay schedules. Item number seven is to receive and file the March 31st, 2024 quarterly treasurer's report. And item number eight are demands. And before we go to the council for any questions or comments, if any member of the public would like to speak on the consent calendar, now's the time to do so. And I will ask the city clerk to handle the public comment on the consent calendar. Thank you. I did not receive any speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak regarding the consent calendar? No speakers. Thank you, Christy. Do I have any council comments on the consent calendar? Seeing none, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. May I have a second? second. I'm, I'm sorry, Lynn, did you second? I did. You did. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. 
Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Okay, next uh, item is the uh, action calendar. It's item number nine, and the subject is Community Facilities District Number 5, Section 31, Special Tax Bonds, Series 2024A and 2024B. For those of you who might no longer recognize what Section 31 means, it is Cotino, and we see some of our partners from Cotino with us here today. Mary, welcome. Eric, good to see you today. And to deliver the staff report is Director of Administrative Services, Kofi Antobam. Cody, Kofi? All right, thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. So on December 16, 2021, <clears throat> excuse me, the City Council adopted Resolution Number 2021-57, establishing Community Facilities District Number 5, Section 31, and providing for the levy of special taxes to finance the acquisition and construction of certain um, public facilities within the district. The City Council also adopted resolution number 2021-58, deeming it necessary to incur bonded debt to fund such facilities. Community facility district number five was formed designating four improvement areas. And so this afternoon, the action before you is to approve issuance of CFD number five, improvement area number one, special tax bonds, Series 2021, 2024A, which are tax-exempt bonds, and Series 2024B, which are taxable bonds, to reimburse the costs of public improvements and public facilities fees paid by the developer and fund bond issuance costs and other costs associated with the bonds. The proposed bond size is not to exceed 50, 000, 50 million, I'm sorry, 50 million, and the expected interest rate um, is less than 6.5% for the Series A bonds and 8.75% for the Series um, B bonds with a 30-year um, loan um, term. The bonds will be sold in this month of May and are expected to close in June of 2024, this year. Please note that these bonds are not the city's debt. The city has no obligation to pay, this, um, to pay debt service, and in the event of a default or non-payment, these bonds are the sole responsibility of property owners within the special district. The pledged revenue for repayment of these bonds are special taxes that are to be paid by the property owners within um, CFD number five, improvement area one. So the way the bonds are structured, each improvement area is going to be issuing bonds for um, um, improvements within that um, improvement area. And so there's no cross-collateralization where bonds from improvement area one are not going to be used to fund um, expenses or activity in improvement area two. So the special taxes that are going to be paid by property owners ranges from $2,167 to $11,383 annually based on the size of each property. Notices of this special tax is provided to property owners and adequately disclosed when purchasing their homes. Homeowners also have the option of prepaying the special bonds and the total tax burden per home is expected to be less than 2% of its assessed value. Special taxes within, um, for this um, bond will be first um, levied in the 2024-2025 tax year to pay debt service and admin costs. The city's CFD administrator will be responsible for annual calculation of special taxes necessary to pay the bonds, um, place the assessments on the county tax roll, and ensure that debt service payments are made. Again, these bonds are not the debt of the city. So in case of a default, the city is not responsible in paying these um, bonds. Staff recommends that the city council approve the attached resolution and authorizing issuance of the bonds and execution of related documents. That concludes my presentation. And with us today are representatives from um, the, developer, the development, development team we also have um, representatives from the city's um, financial advisors office, bond council, the underwriter, and special tax consultants. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you.
Thank you, Kofi. Let's uh, move on to public comment. Would the city clerk please handle public comment on this item? Thank you. I did not receive any speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on agenda item number nine? No speakers. Thank you, Christy. Any council comments or questions? Uh, I'll only make this comment, Mayor, that uh, this is really standard operating procedure uh, on a number of developments that we've had in the city of Rancho Mirage over the years, the most recently uh, being Del Webb. So the, the bonded indebtedness uh, goes, as Kofi pointed out, uh, goes to each property owner and is not the liability of the city and uh, works out well for all parties. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I do see Mary and Eric in the, uh, in the gallery today. Do, you, do either of you have anything that you'd like to say or updates you'd like to give us about Cotino? Or are you good? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Okay, all right, and we're good too. Thank you so much. All right, uh, may I have a motion, please? I'll be happy to make that motion, Mayor, that the uh, motion that the city, of, the city council adopt resolution number 2024 next in order, authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $50 million aggregate principal amount of City of Rancho Mirage Community Facilities District Number 5, Section 31, Special Tax Bonds, Series 2024A, Tax Exempt, and Series 2024B, Federally Taxable, approving the execution and delivery of an indenture, a bond purchase agreement, a continuing disclosure agreement, and the preparation of an official statement and other matters related thereto. We have a second? I'll second it. Motion and second, please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. And we do not have any closed session agenda today. So this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.